Welcome back. We're on location for a very special edition of Hometown tonight here at St. Peter's University Hospital. And I'm joined by Dr. David E. Jacob, Chief of Cardiology. Dr. Jacob, great to see you. Thanks for coming. We're really glad to have you here. You have a very interesting, a very special story, one in which fits perfectly in the month of February, Heart Health Awareness Month. I guess break it down for us, your story, Dr. Jacob. Well, I guess you go back to the health fair here at St. Peter's. Many years ago, probably about eight years ago, um, I went downstairs, had my blood sugar checked, which was normal, had my blood pressure checked, which was extremely high. It was like 160 over 90, 160 over 100, so it was very high. And I was really embarrassed. Everybody looked at me, you're the chief of cardiology, my goodness, you know, you're going to have a stroke on us. Went to see my doctor, he wanted to put me on medication. I said, Let, just give me a chance to make some adjustments. So I went out and I basically ate half as much as I used to eat. Whatever I was eating, I would eat half the quantity. And I started exercising, and funny enough, when I used to walk jog two laps around the high school track, I would be short of breath, which is on, you know, really bad shape. My knees hurt, my back hurt, my shoulders hurt, all those kind of things that I hear from my patients now. And as I began to lose weight, I began to exercise and move more. And now I'm up to running half marathons. I entered this year, last year, and uh, uh, participated in, in the New York City Triathlon. And I'm down 55 pounds. And um, I've been able to keep the weight off. What I tell my patients a lot is that weight loss is like money. There's a lot of people who can make money. There's a lot of people who can lose weight. But the key is to save money, and the key is to keep the weight off. So what I advocate to patients is a way to lose weight, but also a lifestyle, not a diet, a way in which they can keep the weight off. Now you had a moment where you realized, hey, I gotta get things in order. People have moments like that. Uh, it's about, I guess it's whether or not you act on those moments, and that's the, probably the difficult part, the challenge in making that lifestyle change. I think you're right. I think you know there is a moment when you decide, and I try and trigger that moment when I see the patients in the office. You know, you tell them, do you want to see your grandchildren? I often say, you know, if they're a 50-year-old man, do you want to be a happy 60, 70-year-old man? Because you you look down the future. I also give them the line that you know God gave you the first 40, and the second 40 you got to earn. That's also one of my favorites as well. Um, but I think people are paralyzed on what to do and how to do it. That's why the methods that I used, you know, cutting back on your quantities immediately. I'm not saying you can't have ice cream or you can't have a piece of pizza, but don't eat four pieces. You know, have one and a half pieces of pizza or two. Have a little bit of ice cream. You know, I don't know whatever you like to eat. Those are things I happen to like to eat. But, um, you know, cut back on your quantity and then exercise is important. You know, uh, I know everybody's lifestyle is different. I know we're all working hard, long hours, but I try and advocate to my patients to try and exercise 50 minutes five times a week, or that would be the goal, uh, two days off. I usually say one day off for rest, one day for church or temple. That's what I usually tell them. So, um, you know, I, I really advocate trying to get up to 50 minutes because at 30 minutes, it's good, better than nothing. But once you get above that, the metabolic benefits and the weight loss benefits are tremendous. Um, and you really see a big difference. And as far as what kind of exercise to do, what I tell my patients, the best exercise is the one that you will do. That's the best one. Walking, I walk home from work just about every day. Um, I'm lucky, I live about three miles from here in Highland Park. I was born and raised there in Highland Park, New Jersey. And I get to walk home. So that walking is great. Jogging, biking, um, swimming, you know, whatever you like to do, whatever you can do is the best thing. I also advocate some weightlifting, light weightlifting. Um, I used resistant bands, stretchy bands, or I use very light weights, uh, under 10 pound weights actually. Um, I don't like people to lift a lot of weights and bulk up because that may raise their blood pressure and actually make them more bulky. And I advocate people slimming down and being more lean as you get older. I think that's more healthy. Heart health, it, it's always a hot topic. Maybe never more so in February when we really want to shed some light on the issue. A leading cause of death in, in our country. What are some symptoms of poor heart health that people really need to key in on? Well, uh, let's, stay, let's say with the uh, symptoms uh, in general, typical symptoms um, would be chest discomfort or abnormal shortness of breath, typically brought on with exertion, relieved by rest. Uh, th this comfort may radiate to your left arm, your neck, your jaw, your teeth, things like that. Um, now we have to remember that people that are diabetic, and if you're diabetic out there, or women may present atypically. So 
let's just say all of a sudden a, a woman uh, realizes or that she used to be able to walk up two flights of stairs and now can, can only walk up one flight of stairs and she's short of breath or her left arm hurts all of a sudden when she's walking through the supermarket you know I think those are the kind of things you have to be aware of um, and things like that when you came to your realization it was at a point in your life when you were ready to make the change but you're also the picture of health now and it's proof that it can be done I think Maybe when you talk to your patients or when our viewers are out there watching and they decide to make that change, I think it's important they ease into this as well. Is that also key to continuing and to settle into that routine? Well, I think it's true. I think um, for the plan of eating, um, you could do that, you could ease into it or you could just st start cutting your quantities. Also, I, I didn't mention, I, I also tell the patients not to drink what I call junk fluids. So the juices, um, sodas are just loaded with sugar uh, loaded with calories I tell everybody eat an orange eat half an orange actually eat half an orange now and eat half an orange for lunch um, instead of drinking orange juice uh, same with any quarter of ju juices and sodas if you just cut those calories out most people would lose weight just like that beginning an exercise program you certainly should check with your physician make sure you're in shape to begin a more serious exercise program as you may not have been exercising and been out of shape and it could be dangerous I was always a bit of an athlete so I felt pretty comfortable getting out there and beginning to exercise but it's amazing as you lose weight um, and exercise and eat better the joint pains go away you know you sort of detoxify yourself and I think you feel a lot better and, and then once you go back and try and eat those foods again and um, high fat foods salty foods which I didn't mention are very bad as well gotta look out for salt once you go back to try and eat those foods they don't taste that good anymore actually you don't like them I don't like sugary drinks and fatty foods and salt anymore Wow, I gotta hang out with Dr. Jacob more often because this is <laughs> really important information here and it's information that I think people are starting to heed or are they are we making a dent in the population when it comes to eating right, exercising more. We see the, the president's wife in her Eat Right, Move More campaign. Are we seeing more awareness being shed on getting healthy? Well, I think we, the population that I see is a skewed population. They're coming into a cardiologist's office. So I need to not take that as my biopsy of, to answer your question. But I am encouraged when I hear that leaders in this country are taking the fight to the schools. Um, when I grew up, I was a chubby kid, so it's very easy for me to become a chubby and obese adult. And I think that's, uh, for a lot of us, that's the issue. So I think learning how to eat right and learning to exercise and moving is an important part of your life should begin very young, and those habits should begin very young. I want to emphasize that everything I've told you is not a diet. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle change that you have to maintain, and that's how you maintain your weight loss and that has to begin being young you know I mean it can happen in your 40 that's great but it'd be nicer if it happened when you were you know 10 where can we learn more what can we do are there people should should they document their progress should they, they track their progress to see where they are in, in getting fit I, mean, I guess that's important too not only seeing the change but also seeing it on paper and feeling it well I think there's a lot of ways to do that um, that's a good question I like that uh, as far as men uh, and I'm not sure women as well. You can always tell by the way your belt is fitting, by the way your pants are fitting, by the way the neck on your shirt is fitting. By the way, I went down two and a half inches on my neck size. So um, you can always tell that. You know because you're exercising more or able to walk farther without shortness of breath. Um, you know because, I'll tell you one good thing and it doesn't lie, is I would step on the scale a few times a week. That is a very good way to see, you know, am I doing the right thing, am I eating the right things, and am I going in the right direction. It can be a very good positive feedback tool, um, or it could be a good negative feedback tool. It depends how you're doing. Um, but I think that that is important to monitor, yes. Now, I know you're in the maintenance phase, so, you know, you're working hard to maintain that 55-pound weight loss. Do we see, you know, people who embark on eating right and exercising more, lose weight more in the beginning, and the challenge is maintaining? that weight loss? Absolutely. You know, you lose a lot in the beginning. A lot of that will be water weight. And you will lose a lot because your body, you're changing your bad habits into your good habits. So later on, it is more difficult. But I initially lost about 40 pounds and then lost 15 pounds later on when I really ramped up my exercise to the extreme degree that I do. And I don't advocate that for all our listeners necessarily. Um, but it, it's not that 
difficult to do. It's just like I said, it's a lifestyle. So, you know, if you can get into the lifestyle, you like the way you look, you like the way your clothes feel, you know, you like the way you feel, it's really not that difficult to maintain. And I, another thing is that I lost all this weight and did all these things, we're talking over multiple years, five to six years, not over five to six weeks or months. You know, this is a slow, progressive change in, in my body and the way I felt. And I think that's what I advocate for my patients. Again, say it again, it's a lifestyle, not a diet. You don't want to deprive yourself of some of the foods that you like. You really want to watch your quantities and cut out the junk calorie foods and things like that. That's a great point. There's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts when it comes to changing lifestyles. And I think that's key because we're always looking for the quick fix. I told my patient this morning, he, he said, Doc, um, um, you know, I'm eating salads, um, but I can't lose weight. I'm trying to exercise more and I can't lose weight. And he was overweight. So I started asking him, I needed to ask him three questions before I got to it. I said, you have to be honest with yourself about your calories. Well, he's drinking orange juice every day and he's drinking, I think, cran apple juice. I told him, if you just stop that, I'm going to ballpark, that's probably three, 400 calories a day. If you, and you don't eat the, the creamy salad dressings on this salad that you're eating, I bet you cut out 500 calories a day. If your average man cut out 500 calories a day and just continued to be active and exercise moderately, guaranteed you would lose weight. Now, in addition to this interview, you also have some multimedia that people can check out to continue to heed your advice. Yeah, I made a video on this exact topic, which may have got into a few more details. It'll be similar to this. Um, and you can check that out on, the, um, uh, on YouTube at the St. Peter's uh, YouTube video site. We'd be glad to have you there. Well, Dr. Jacob, thank you so much for spending some time with us in what is always a very busy day for you. So thank you again. It was my pleasure having you here. And I love to discuss the topic. And we enjoyed having you here at St. Peter's. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. All right, everyone, stay with us. Much more hometown after this.